So years ago when I was a private pilot living in Florida, one of the coolest things that you could do down here was take an airplane and do what they called the shuttle tour. This is back when the space shuttle was still operational. Um, but you could work with the uh, approach controller and keep you at 4,000 feet, I believe it was. And you could fly over the space center, right over top of a space shuttle, sitting on the launch pad, and all around the whole Kennedy Space Center and, and get a tour of the whole thing from the air. Then you could follow that up with a low approach over the shuttle landing facility, uh, coming in just like the space shuttle. So, I don't know if that's still a thing anymore. One of the other things you also used to be able to do was during a shuttle launch, as long as you stayed to the west of the river that separates the Space Center from the mainland, you could be in the air during a shuttle launch, and I've actually got a picture that I took out the nose of a Cessna pointed up at the Space Shuttle going up in an early morning launch. Um, that, I know you can't do anymore after 9-11. Now there's a TFR about 50 mile radius around the whole Space Center during a launch. But, not sure about the Space Shuttle tour thing. So, let's go find out. Base, 
Echo 600, continue on the runway, turn right at Echo. Right at Echo 600. Cherokee 79 November, uh, runway 36, cleared for touch and go. There will be a Cherokee depart by arrival. Uh, clear for touch and go, runway 36. Clear for touch and go, for runway 36, AT 79 November. So the plan is to take off here out of the Titusville Space Coast Center Airport. Uh, vehicle assembly building, the NASA Space Center and all that is right over there. So, uh, like I said, we can't do the flyover of the launch pads anymore. Used to be able to do that uh, back in the 90s. I'm guessing 9-11 has a lot to do with that. Um, you also used to be able to fly in the air and watch a space shuttle launch as long as you stayed on this side of the river. I uh, certainly can't do that anymore. So, uh, we can do a low approach at the shuttle landing facility, so we're going to go check that out and we'll probably get some good views uh, of the Space Center in the air from there, so that should make it worth it. Let's go make it happen. Tower Air 15600 with you holding short uh, runway 36 on Alpha. Uh, looking to try to coordinate to do the shuttle low approach uh, with the approach after departure. Arrow uh, 600 for the low approach over there at Space Coast uh, at the shuttle landing facility. If you want to you um, departure, you'll be able to proceed to the northeast there and just contact the uh, CTAP frequency 1255 uh, once I switch over. Okay, copy one two five five when you make the switch. Uh, six zero zero, thanks. So stay down, Roman. Go and start right base now. Try to be a Cherokee depart by arrival. Runway three six, clear to land. Runway three six, clear to land. Eight nine, Roman. Six zero zero, northeast departure is approved. Runway three six, full length, clear for takeoff. Okay, northeast departure approved. Clear for takeoff. Three six, full length. Uh, one five six zero zero. Cherokee uh, seven right, nine, November. Are, are you looking for another short approach? Finals clear. Clear to go. Nine, November. Check 7 9 remember, make a left 36 report reestablished on the downwind. Make a left 36 report uh, reestablished on the downwind, so 9 November. Skyflight 438, contact Orlando departure. Over to Orlando, Skyflight 438, see ya. Space Coast Tower, first flight one and six miles south, requesting northbound transition on the west bank of the river at 700. First flight one, uh, northbound transition is approved at or below 500 feet. That's right, or below 500, first flight one. Cherokee uh, 700, make, make another left 360, make a little bit wider this time. Uh, left 360, 79 November. towards the northeast at this time. Proceeding northeast, 600. Arrow 600, when you get to the mid portion of the river there, prior to entering the airspace, you can contact uh, the CTAP frequency 128.55. For your low approach, don't go below 500 feet, don't go east of the runway. Copy, don't go east of the runway, not below 500 feet, and uh, 2855, uh, halfway over the uh, river here. Thank you for your help, 600. You're welcome. Uh, 7 9 November. Uh, traffic is a helicopter about two miles south of position over the uh, west bank of the river there, northbound at or below 500 feet. Do you have in sight? There's traffic, 7 9 November. First flight one traffic in your 12 o'clock there, about a mile and a half to Cherokee entering the downwind in gate 1000. He'll be doing a short approach here in a moment. Roger, traffic inside, first flight one. First flight one, Roger. Tower arrow 15600 request. NASA Tower arrow 15600. Tower arrow 
15600. Tower arrow one five six zero zero no joy on one two eight five five arrow six zero zero yeah just use it as a CTAP frequency the tower is closed right now just use it as a CTAP frequency for your lower approach okay copy that I'm sorry I was, I was mistaken thank you no problem. Space Center traffic arrow 15600 is just over the river. We'll be uh, making right-hand traffic We're in the channel landing facility, landing to the southeast, uh, low approach. Center traffic arrow 15600 is on a right base for low approach to the southeast. Don't get to do this every day.
Alaska Space Center Tower, Arrow 15600, outside of uh, your class Delta, passing east to west along the north side of the airport. Just want to thank you for the hospitality and uh, thanks for that. That was uh, that was quite an amazing view. For 15600 Space Hotel, roger that. Leaving the class Delta, frequency changes are authorized. Have a good day. You too, sir. Thank you. So I don't know about you guys, but that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. I wish we could fly over the launch pad still, but I think I've got some really good footage out the wing cam. Um, so I think we'll get a pretty good view of the launch facility out there. Uh, we went right by the vehicle assembly building. That was pretty cool. Um, and, <laughs> and they've got a space shuttle orbiter on the ground there, right in the middle of the, uh, the runway. So that was pretty cool too. Um, yeah, well worth the trip over here. So I wasn't sure how that process was going to work. Uh, it's been a while since I've been over in that area. I didn't know if I was going to have to talk to the approach controller or not. Um, but in talking to the uh, guys at Space Coast Tower there, uh, which is right on the river, uh, just before you get to the Space Center, um, they said to just contact the tower frequency over there. I was a little bit confused. I didn't realize what he was saying is go to the tower frequency and use it as a CTAF. I didn't realize that that tower was closed. I don't know if it's always closed or not. Um, but anyway, so that all worked out. That was really cool. Um, yeah, glad we did that. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I know I've been away for a while. I've had a lot going on with work and some training and all that kind of stuff, but happy to be back. Uh, I've got some other content coming up, got a lot of things planned, so stay tuned for that. What a beautiful day to fly. It's so nice now. Summer's over, it's fall. The weather in Florida is gonna be beautiful like this for like the next seven or eight months. So, if anybody tells you it's hot and miserable in Florida, it is in the summertime. Most of the year, ah, it's fantastic. Great flying weather. I mean, I'm at 1,500 feet and it's pretty smooth out here. I uh, love it. Order 493 Orlando, approach altimeter 2988, information Juliet's current Stanford, what's your request? 74 degrees, clear skies. So, here's something I'm going to throw out to you guys. Give me some feedback in the comments section if you would on it. So I was thinking about doing a few videos based on some common questions that I get asked a lot as a, as a commercial pilot when I'm at work. Um, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, you know, how do you become a pilot? How do you get your license? How do you work your way? How do you get to the airlines? And so I, I have, you know, lengthy discussions. I don't, I love answering questions. So. I'll have that conversation um, probably at least once or twice a week, it seems like. It's, sometimes it's a parent asking me for a child, or a lot of times it's, you know, teenage kids asking me that, or um, I've even had some, some adults that are looking at maybe their second career, and, you know, would this be a good idea kind of thing. So, I was thinking about doing a video and just kind of address all that and put it out there on the channel. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, the other question I get asked a lot is, you know, what is it like flying for the airlines? Like, you know, what's the schedule like? And how do you uh, pick airplanes that you fly? You know, where do you go? What are the overnights like? That kind of thing. Um, so I also thought about doing a video on that. Uh, but I'd love your feedback. Let me know if that's something you think I should do, if you guys would be interested in watching it. And anything else you'd like to, uh, to see, feel free to throw that out there. A couple things that I've got coming up. Um, I'm going to get a dynamic balancing done on the prop. Also, the prop is coming up for an overhaul. Um, it's still got plenty of time on it as far as hours, but as far as uh, years, it's kind of coming up due for that. So I'll do that. I'll take you guys along with me to get that checked out. Um, another thing that I've uh, noticed, there's a little bit of a differential between my altimeter and I've got a backup. They're both in sync. Um, and what's getting put out on my transponder. 
So I think that's a problem with my altitude encoder. So we'll go to an avionics shop, we'll get that checked out, see what they think of that. So that'll be coming up in the future. We'll look for that. Also, now that it's finally cooled off, I have got quite a few questions about, you know, the interior of the airplane after I did the renovation. Um, one of the things that I did for all, like a lot of the side panels and things is I did not put screws back in. I decided to try Velcro, see how that works, because it's a nicer appearance. And I thought in most areas it worked pretty good. So, two things. One, I'm going to do a video to kind of talk about that and let you guys know how it how it is holding up. It's been holding up over the course of a year. Um, and I'll let you know ahead of time, a little sneak peek. There's a couple areas where I think I'm going to put screws back in, uh, just because of a lot of use, like when this door opens and closes is one area. But I've been waiting through the summer, because I'm not working in the hangar uh, in the summer heat in Florida for sure. But now that the weather's cooled off, we'll be coming up on an annual inspection in January, so I might hold off on that, because for the annual, I've got to pull all this interior out anyway. So I might hold off and do it when I put the interior back in. Or I might do it ahead of time. We'll see. Uh, but so that's another video that'll be coming. But yeah, let me know if there's some things that you'd like me to talk about. Um, things you'd like to see. And I, I'd be happy to put something together for you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you would. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.